Anytime you are doing science, you need to collect evidence or data. And sometimes that evidence is qualitative in nature, and other times it is quantitative in nature. And if it's quantitative, it involves numbers. And so this chapter deals with how we manipulate those numbers. Normally, numbers come from measurements, and measurements represent quantities. So a quantity is something that has a very specific amount, or sometimes instead of the word amount, we use the word magnitude. So a volume would be a specific quantity, weight or length would also be specific quantities. And then when we measure those quantities, we measure them in certain units. So the unit of measurement depends on the quantity that you are measuring. So for example, if you're measuring volume, you might use the unit teaspoon. If you're measuring weight, you might use the unit pound. And if you're measuring length, you might measure something in feet. When we study chemistry, instead of using units like teaspoons and pounds and feet, we have certain standard units that we use, or what we call SI base units. For mass, we use the standard unit of kilogram. For length, we use a standard unit of meter. Time is always measured in seconds. Temperature has the standard unit of Kelvin, although in chemistry we commonly use Celsius, the SI base unit or the standard unit is Kelvin. And then when we're counting things, if we want to know how much we have or what the amount of something that we have is, we will study them in moles. And we'll talk much more about moles in later chapters. There are many different prefixes that we use when we use SI base units. Uh, these prefixes include Terra, Giga, Mega, Kilo, Deci, Centi, Milli, Micro, Nano, and Pico. Ways that you have used these prefixes in your normal life would be if you are measuring how much memory is in your computer, you might say that you have 40 gigabytes of memory on your computer. If you are running a race for, say, cross country, you might say that you are running a 5K, and that K stands for Kilo, or in other words, you are running 5 kilometers. If you're measuring out a liquid, you might say that you're measuring 100 milliliters of water. When you're using these SI prefixes, it's very common to see them written in scientific notation. When you're writing something in scientific notation, you always express the number as a number somewhere between 1 and 10, and then multiplied by a power of 10. So for example, really big numbers have positive exponents. So let's say that you are measuring something in watts, and let's say you had 2,000 watts of electricity. All right, that watt has the abbreviation W, and the 1,000 has that meaning of 10 to the third. And so you could write it then as 2KW, or 2 kilowatts. If you were measuring, say, the memory in your computer, you would measure it in bytes. All right, and let's say your computer has 3 million bytes. The bytes is abbreviated with a B. The million, all right, means 10 to the 6th as its scientific notation, and then when you write them together, you would say 3 megabytes. If you were writing numbers that were really small, they would have negative exponents. So let's say that you were running a race, and somebody beat you by four hundredths of a second. So that hundredths, all right, is in scientific notation written as 10 to the negative 2. Um, so you would write 4 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds, or you could just write 0 0.04 seconds. If you were measuring, say, the diameter of an atom, which would be really, really tiny, it might have a diameter of 5.9 nanometers. All right, well, this letter N means nano, which in scientific notation is 10 to the negative 9th. So 5.9 times 10 to the negative 9th meters is the same as 5.9 nanometers. Or if you wrote it all the way out, it would have lots and lots of zeros. So that's a really tiny number. We can also derive our own units. We can take all of those base units, those SI base units, and we can combine them together to measure different units. So here I have like a rectangle. And if I wanted to find the area of the rectangle, I would take width times length, multiply them together. So I would have, say, a meter times a meter, and I would multiply them together to get a meter squared. And that's a derived unit. If I was doing volume, which would be length times width times height, right, I would take a meter times a meter times a meter, those are all SI units, right, and then multiply them together and I get a meter cubed. So a meter cubed is also a derived SI unit. 
Density is another derived unit. Density is the ratio of mass to volume. It has the equation D equals mass divided by volume, or M divided by V. Sometimes you can draw these triangles on your paper to help you to calculate density by covering up one of the values depending on what you want to solve for. Now the unit for density, the SI unit, is kilograms divided by meters cubed. Because remember the standard unit for mass is a kilogram, and the standard unit for volume, if I derive that volume unit like I did on the previous slide, is meters cubed. So my standard unit is kilograms per meter cubed. However, when we're doing chemistry, more often you will see units of grams per centimeter cubed or grams per milliliter when we're talking about density. Density is also an intensive physical property, which means it does not depend on the amount of matter present. Meaning, if I increase the amount of, say, water I have, as I increase the volume of water, the mass of the water is also going to increase, and since both of those numbers are increasing at the same proportions, then the density stays the same. All right, so let's try a few density calculations. What is the density of a block of marble that occupies 310 centimeters cubed and has a mass of 853 grams? The first thing that I find very helpful is to take all of the numbers that are in the problem and write them down, like make a list of all the variables that I'm given. So this 310 centimeters cubed says it occupies a space of 310 centimeters cubed, so that is my volume. All right, this other number, 853 grams, is my mass. All right, second step is to write down the formula that I need in order to calculate this. So since I'm solving for density, I want to write density equals mass divided by volume. And then now that I have this list of numbers over here to the side, all I need to do is substitute those numbers into my formula. So instead of M, I'm going to put 853. And instead of volume, I'm going to put 310. And then if you take and plug into your calculator 853 divided by 310, you should get 2.75 grams per centimeter cubed. All right, let's try another one. Diamond has a density of 3.26 grams per centimeter cubed. What is the mass of the diamond that has a volume of 0.351 centimeters? So again, I'm going to write all that information down. The volume that was given, 0.351 centimeters cubed. The density that was given, 3.26 grams per centimeter cubed. Right. Notice that I'm dealing with the density equation again, so I'm going to write down my density equation. Density equals mass divided by volume, and then I'm going to plug in the numbers that are over here into my equation on the right. So density is 3.26. Mass is what I'm trying to solve for, so I'm going to leave that in M, and my volume is 0 0.351. Now, when I'm solving this problem, I need to cross multiply right here in order to solve for m. So in your calculator, you'll want to go 3.26 times 0 0.351. And when you plug that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.14 grams. All right, last example. What is the volume of a sample of liquid mercury that has a mass of 76.2 grams, given that the density of mercury is 13.6 grams per milliliter? Notice a little bit different unit on my density, but we'll still solve it the exact same way. So the information pulled out of the problem, mass is 76.2 grams. The density of mercury is 13.6 grams per milliliter. Write down my density equation. Now notice here I'm solving for volume. I'm solving for this bottom number down here. I'm going to want to rearrange the equation to make this a little bit easier. So let's cross multiply my volume and my density. All right, and since we're solving for volume, then I'll need to divide both sides by D so that I can get volume all by itself. Those will cancel out, and I'll be left with volume equals mass divided by density. So now I'll take the numbers that are over here on the left-hand side and plug them in on my problem. So mass. 76.2 grams, divided by density, 13.6. And when I plug those in my calculator, you should get 
0.60 milliliters as your final answer. Now I can also convert between different units. So when you're converting, you use values called equalities. And an equality is a statement which shows how two units are equal to each other. So for example, one foot is equal to 12 inches. And I can write that as a conversion factor, which is like a ratio or a fraction based on the equality between those two different units. So for a foot and 12 inches, I can either write one foot over 12 inches, or I can write 12 inches over one foot. And those are my two conversion factors for the equality mentioned above. Now when I'm converting between units, I'm going to use a process called dimensional analysis. And this is just a mathematical technique that allows you to use conversion factors to solve measurement problems. And it makes the process of converting between units much simpler. Let's start off with 24 inches and convert that into feet. So we write down the starting amount, and then we write down the equality, and then we're able to solve for feet. So notice by putting inches on top and writing my conversion factor so that inches are on the bottom, those inches will cancel out when I multiply. And so ultimately I'm going to be taking 24, dividing by 12, and getting 2 feet as my answer. Alright, let's practice one using prefixes. Express a mass of 0 0.014 milligrams in grams. So again, I'm going to start off writing down what I was given, 0 0.014 milligrams. And then I'm going to make my t-chart. I'm going to write milligrams on the bottom, because that's what I want to cancel out. I want the top and the bottom to cancel. And then I know how to convert between milligrams and grams. Remember that one milligram is the same as 10 to the negative third grams, because milli, right, that prefix milli, means 10 to the negative third. 10 to the negative third is also the same as 0 0.001. And now I'm just going to multiply 0 0.014 times 0 0.001 or times 10 to the negative third. And I will get 0 0.000014 grams as my answer. That's a lot of zeros to write, so sometimes it's easier to write it in scientific notation. 0, 0.0, oops, that's not scientific notation. 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth grams. Last example, express a length of 16.45 kilometers in centimeters. So start off with what you're given, 16.45 kilometers. Okay, make my t-chart. This one's going to be a little bit longer. Kilometers on bottom, meters on top. Now I don't want to end in meters, so I'm going to need to add one more part to my t-chart. Meters on bottom, centimeters on top. All right, think about your prefixes. You know that one kilometer, kilo, means 10 to the third. All right, and centimeter, centi, means 10 to the negative two. So I can either plug these into my calculator as scientific notation, or I can plug them in as their actual decimal places. So 10 to the third is the same as 1,000, and 10 to the negative two is the same as 0 .01. So I can go 16.45 times 1,000, and then divide that by 0 .01. And if I plug all of that into my calculator, I should get 16.45000 centimeters, or in scientific notation, 1.645 times 10 to the sixth centimeters. Either answer is acceptable.